Aloha, I'm Scott Makuakani. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Estate Planning Council in Honolulu. You're watching the Elder Care Channel. I'd like to talk with you for a couple of minutes about trusts. We've all heard of trusts, but really what are they? Well, trusts come in a lot of different categories. Two of the big categories are testamentary and living. And you might not know exactly what a testamentary trust is, or at least you might not know you know, but you do know the term last will and testament. So a testamentary trust is one that's created by the terms of your last will and testament. And testamentary trusts are very good for providing for management of your assets after you're gone, but they do absolutely nothing for you or your family during your lifetime because by definition they can't exist as long as you're alive. So they don't provide any protection in the event of incapacity. They do provide for management of your assets after you're gone. So what's a better way to go? Well, one way is what we call living trusts. And living trusts break down into a lot of different categories as well. But two of the big ones are what we call revocable and irrevocable. And I'd like to show you an example of each. This, ladies and gentlemen, is an example of a revocable trust. You notice it's got some assets in it. Now this dollar bill can signify anything that you can own. It can signify cash, it can signify real estate, stocks, your business, anything you can own. Now the way a revocable trust works is it's kind of like the little red wagon and that as you can see it's open in the back. You can put assets in, you can take assets out. So you lose absolutely no control by creating a revocable trust and placing assets into it. You always have access to them. Now the catch is that if you can touch what's in the trust, your creditors can too. So if creditor protection might be a concern, another kind of trust that you can consider creating is what we call the irrevocable trust. Irrevocable trusts are kind of like the revocable in that you can create them during your lifetime. You can put assets into them, and again, an irrevocable trust can hold any kind of asset that you own. You put the asset in, but then the lid goes on. What the lid signifies is that you can't get back in here any old time you want. There's some limitation in the trust agreement that governs this trust that says that maybe you can get all of the income for the rest of your life. You can just never touch the principal. Maybe it says you can never touch anything in this trust ever again. And there could be some really good estate planning reasons for doing that. For example, maybe you want to give away an asset, but not give away control over that asset. You want to give it to, let's say, a beneficiary who might not be able to hang on to it or might not be able to manage it wisely. Um, well, you can give it to them by way of a trust, that's going to enable that beneficiary to benefit from the asset, but yet not mess it up. Um, a couple of the ways that the irrevocable trust protects the asset are, remember that the beneficiary can't just touch it any old time he or she wants because of the terms of the trust agreement. Now, because the beneficiary can't touch it, neither can the beneficiary's ex-spouse. Neither can the beneficiary's creditor, as long as the rule book for this irrevocable trust is properly set up. Now let me go back to the revocable trust for just a minute and talk about the reasons we might want to create one. Well, imagine that I'm walking through life with my stuff in my hands. Then something bad happens. I become incapacitated or I die. What happens to my stuff? Well, it ends up in a mess on the ground. If the reason for that mess was I had become incapacitated, then someone's going to have to be appointed by the court to pick it up, manage it, pay my bills, make sure I'm taken care of. And it's got to go through this court process that can be just as bad, if not worse, than a process that we've all heard about, maybe we're not all familiar with, called probate. Probate is one of those things that is an awfully good thing to avoid. Well, so is conservatorship. So is the need to have somebody manage your assets for you by way of a court process during your lifetime. Well, what I could have done instead of just carrying my assets through life is I could have created my revocable trust and put my assets into it. And remember, I can always get them back out if I want them. I can always get them back out if I need them. Now, the downside to this trust is that my ex-spouse, my creditor, would be able to reach in there as well. But maybe, just maybe, the idea of having a mechanism for protecting my assets from my own incapacity, for protecting them from a court process after I'm gone, makes this revocable trust worth it. And depending on the kind of assets that I want to place in it, 
Maybe I want to have assets that are going to be very, very accessible to me, even though the downside is they could be accessible to my creditors. And again, I've got a rule book. In my estate plan, there's a component called a trust agreement that says how this trust is to be governed. It says what goes into the trust. Those are the investment instructions. It says what comes out of the trust. Those are the distribution instructions. It says who gets to pick up the handle and pull it when I'm no longer able to. Those are the successor trustee instructions, all set out in the rule book. Now, upon my death, I can say that my trust terminates and the assets go out to the beneficiaries. But remember, if the beneficiary can touch it, who else can touch it? Well, the beneficiary's ex-spouse, the beneficiary's creditor. Maybe I don't want to benefit my children's ex-spouses and creditors after I'm gone. Maybe I want to make sure that the inheritance that I leave behind is going to be there for my family members, not people who are coming along trying to take it away from them. So what I can do is rather than have my trust terminate and the assets go out to the beneficiaries, I can have a lid essentially clamp down on my trust so that my revocable trust actually, for the benefit of my beneficiaries, behaves an awful lot more like an irrevocable trust, where I can give my beneficiaries just about unlimited control over the management of the trust, over the future distributions of the trust, but yet be able to keep those creditors and predators, the ex-spouses and people like that, out of my children's inheritance. Well, there's a few things to think about when it comes to trusts. We've got the revocable, the irrevocable, and some really good reasons for creating both kinds. Until next time, ahui ho.